Nacht Duran Toten was my first Call of Duty experience back in mid-2009, and I've been hooked on Treyarch Zombies ever since. And over 10 years later, it's really fun hearing everyone's opinions on what their favourite map is, or simply what the best map is. For me, that answer is Ascension. Ascension is my favourite Call of Duty Zombies map of all time, and I think pretty much everyone agrees it's a good map at the very least, but nobody really puts it in their top 5. And I get that this thing tends to be quite subjective, but here's the thing guys. Ascension is the greatest Call of Duty Zombies map of all time. Where do I even begin? Let's start with November 9th, 2010. There are many things I can vividly remember about the release of Call of Duty Black Ops, but one thing that only just recently dawned on me was the realization that Black Ops 1 technically had the highest number of zombie maps available at launch, depending on which edition you purchased. I just so happened to pre-order the Hardened Edition, so I got the four remastered World at War maps, as well as Kino de Toten, five, and Dead Ops Arcade. Now, 5 was a unique and rather experimental map that was a lot of fun, but of course, Kino de Toten was the real star of the show. It's common knowledge at this point that Kino de Toten was actually supposed to be DLC 4 for World at War, which explains why it's essentially just Duriza 2.0. In terms of gameplay features, it doesn't really add anything new besides the fire trap, the turret trap, and the Thunder Gun, and don't worry, we'll revisit the Thunder Gun in just a moment. So, just because Kino was overly simple and didn't add many new features, does that make it a bad map? No, not at all. Kino actually turned out to be the perfect on-disc map for Black Ops 1. It was simple enough that newbies could jump in and enjoy a game and get the hang of things, and the main stage popularized training as a valid strategy in zombies. I mean, prior to Kino, only a small number of pro zombie players were training on Shino Numa. But if Kino was meant to be in World at War, where exactly does that leave Black Ops 1? Was 5 supposed to be the main map at launch? Well, no. The main zombies map on Black Ops 1 launch day was actually supposed to be Ascension, with Dead Ops and 5 just being bonus maps. I know, take a moment to digest that, okay? You good? Alright, now I want you to take a moment to just visualize an alternate timeline where Kino de Toten did in fact release as the fourth DLC for World at War, and Ascension ended up being the main launch map for Black Ops 1, and this will all make a lot of sense. First, I want you to think about how huge Ascension is compared to all the previous maps, and then take into account the fact that it was originally supposed to be even larger, as confirmed by Jimmy Zielinski. Next, Ascension introduced two revolutionary perks. Stamina Up, which increases your movement speed and allows you to sprint for longer, and has essentially been in nearly every map since, and of course, PhD Flopper, one of the most iconic and legendary perks to ever exist. You take no fall damage, no explosive damage, and no ray gun splash damage. This perk was single-handedly responsible for me pack-a-punching the M1911 into the Mustang and Sally so many times. And who could forget, it takes advantage of the new dolphin dive mechanic that was introduced to Black Ops 1 and allows you to insta-kill zombies up until the early round 20s just by belly flopping onto the ground. Speaking of 
dolphin diving, Ascension introduced the amazing Gersh device, which replaced monkey bombs and not only did infinite damage to zombies regardless of the round, but it also allowed you to teleport to a random area of the map just by dolphin diving into the portal. It was the original anywhere but here gobblegum. Ascension also gave us the Matryoshka dolls as high damage replacement for Molotov cocktails. They also really suited the theme of the map and tied into the little talking Matryoshka doll easter eggs laying around the map. Hey, good looking. Another addition that really suited the Russian theme of Ascension was the sickle, which of course replaced the bowie knife. And you know what? A lot of people actually forget that Ascension was the first map to introduce the perk bottle drop, which not only gives you a free random perk, which is really cool in and of itself, but it also allows you to obtain more than four perks, which was of course the limit up until this point. So for the first time in Call of Duty Zombies history, you could have five perks. Well, actually, you could have six perks after they added in Mule Kick. Six bloody perks. What a monumental change for the series. These days, you have perkaholics and it doesn't really matter that much, but back then, having more than four perks was a complete game changer. And how exactly did you get that perk bottle drop? By defeating the Space Monkeys, of course. The new special boss round that replaced the Hellhounds. The monkeys would try to steal your perks and you'd get a max ammo for killing them all, but if you managed to end the round without them touching a single one of the perk machines, you would earn the perk bottle drop. One of the most fun challenges to do on this map is to open up just a couple of doors so that you only have access to Quick Revive, PhD Flopper, and the Mystery Box. This makes the monkey rounds a lot easier, but it also makes the normal zombie rounds a lot harder, because the only way you can get Jug is randomly through the perk bottle drop. It's actually a really difficult challenge, but if you can pull it off, you'll be rewarded with all six perks by round 20. Now, what was another important thing that Ascension introduced? Oh yeah, the first main easter egg that pioneered the way for the next three games. If you hung around near the PhD flopper machine, you'd hear this haunting sound that was actually coming from a generator outside of the map. Somebody decided to throw a Gersh device at it one day, and it actually teleported the generator to a different part of the map. Casimir mechanism activation in progress. Error. No power detected. Got it! Power! So people realized something funky was going on, and the hunt began. Let me tell you, I know the Ascension Easter Egg doesn't seem all that impressive compared to all kinds of Easter Eggs we deal with today, but back in 2011, this shit was the biggest deal in the Zombies community. I remember checking the COD Zombies forums and watching live updates of each step being found through Next Gen Tactics, who would later become NGT Zombies, as well as Rad Austin 27 and hell, even Mr. Dalek JD made a video about it back in the day. Man, it all started as this crazy conspiracy that there's some kind of super easter egg hidden in the map that most people just didn't believe at the time, and the people who were hunting for the easter egg just seemed kind of crazy, but as each step was found, the community realized there was something special going on, and it was truly just the coolest thing to be a part of. And of course, we got to learn more about the story through the easter egg, and the in-game reward was a 90 second death machine, which, although we technically got the death machine drops on 5 first, it seems as though it was originally developed for Ascension, much like the Thunder Gun. Wait, what? I thought Kino was responsible for introducing one of the greatest wonder weapons of all time. Right? Right? Not quite. The Thunder Gun was made by the Ascension group for Ascension. I know, this is getting just ridiculous, but first of all, just take a look at the damn thing. Now look at the map. Now look at the gun, and back to the map. You've got the Russian word for warning written on the top, and one of the radios in Ascension even refers to the prototype as Project Thunder. I assure you that our craft will be far superior to whatever the Americans, or should I say, Canadians, <laughs> are developing. Finally, Project Thunder is nearing completion. My staff has assured me that the remaining issues of the effective range and power cells will be solved within the next few months. And then later in 2017, we got the Zombies Chronicle timeline that mentions Gersh working on Project Thunder, as well as the Gersh device, which was nicknamed Project Mercury. So the Thunder Gun is definitely Ascension's wonder weapon. But just to be clear, 
None of this takes away from Kino de Toten as a map. In fact, I think things turned out for the better with Kino being the Black Ops map on disc instead of Ascension. I just want to give you some proper context behind Ascension though, so that you can really, truly appreciate everything Ascension has done for zombies as a game mode. Now that you truly understand why Ascension is one of the most innovative and fundamentally important maps in all of Call of Duty Zombies, let's get to why it is the greatest map of all time. Really, at the end of the day, it all just comes down to one word. Can you guess what it is? No, it, it isn't complexity. It isn't cipher. It's definitely not easter egg. Guys, it's fun. Ascension is fun. It doesn't matter if you're new to COD Zombies or if you're a pro. You can jump into a game of Ascension without any preparation and you can just have a good time. You don't have to complete a bunch of easter egg steps just to unlock the pack-a-punch and other features. All you have to do is load into the map on that Lunar Lander, admire Richtofen's new outfit, and kill some zombies. The pack-a-punch, although you have to do a few steps, is actually pretty straightforward, similar to Duriza and Kino, and you can actually blow up the rocket with a ray gun or an explosive launcher, which not only looks awesome, but it also rewards you with a double points drop. Man, Ascension's just got that same appeal of simplicity that Kino has, but with a lot more depth and way more gameplay features. You still have the Thunder Gun, but you also have so many other tools at your disposal, and you have four viable training areas. This map is so fun not only on solo, but co-op as well, because you can all camp together, or you can switch things up, and you can just train in the four different areas. If you want to practice your training skills, you're not just limited to one area like the stage on Kino. You have these four different places to choose from. Of course, the most popular one is the Lunar Lander area right next to PhD Flopper, but the Pack-a-Punch area is just as viable and even has a turret trap to help you out. You can also train in the starting room, which is not only a completely viable strategy, but it's also probably the quickest high round strategy on the map. And as a cheeky little bonus in the starting room, of course you have the centrifuge, which really comes in handy when you run out of ammo, and it's also just really entertaining. And the fourth training area is near the Stamina Up Lunar Lander, which is probably the least ideal of the four training areas, but it's still totally doable. Ascension also has just an incredibly mysterious and eerie atmosphere as soon as you load in and everything is in black and white and you hear this mysterious voice talk to you. Please. And then you start to listen to the zombies ripping the iron bars off of the windows while that haunting noise emanates from the generator. Ugh. And then the zombies would charge in with new dodging and rolling animations that made them harder to kill and especially harder to get headshots. I mean, even the poster for the DLC is mysterious. Is this bald guy Richtofen or Gersh? We still don't know. And can we just take a moment to appreciate what a beautiful song Abracadabra is? It's definitely in my top five easter egg songs of all time. Look, I understand that there are three obvious questions you guys have right now. One. Isn't Ascension too easy? 2. What about the Black Ops 3 remaster of Ascension? And 3. What about the monkeys? Don't they bother you? Let's start with question 1. Is Ascension too easy? Look, does Ascension have the tools and the space to make this one of the easier maps in the COD Zombies series? Yes. Is Ascension also capable of throwing a few challenges at you to spice things up and keep it interesting? Also, yes. Ascension is a versatile map, and it simply is what you make of it. It really just depends on how you play. I mean, Origins is one of the most beloved maps of all time, and deservedly so because it's nuanced and contains a lot more tools and mini goals to work with. You've got side easter eggs, the main easter eggs, the cool wonder weapons, but it's also one of the easiest and fastest maps to get high rounds on. All you have to do is get the Ice Staff and Alchemical Antithesis, and then stand in one specific area and shoot the Ice Staff at your feet. You can get a high round without even trying doing this, and to a lot of people, that's not fun. To me, I tried it, and it just wasn't fun, so you know what? I haven't done it since. Instead, I've used different strategies and different playstyles and Origins, and you know what? Every time I've played Origins since, I've had a lot of fun. So if you're bored of just running around in circles with the Thunder Gun near PhD Flopper, just stop doing that. 
try out some new challenges. Ascension contains one of my favourite COD Zombies achievements ever, which was to pack a punch a weapon before round 8, and back in the day that was actually pretty intimidating. I'd recommend giving it a try and seeing how early you can get to pack a punch. And like I said earlier, try buying Quick Revive as your only perk and then get the rest of your perks from the monkeys. I guarantee you you'll have a fun time and it'll be challenging. And even more simply, just try hanging out in different areas of the map. Don't always stick to that one safe space. So what about the Black Ops 3 remaster of Ascension then? <sighs> yeah, that shit's too easy. I mean, you've got Double Tap 2.0, Double Pack a Punch, and Mega Gobble Gums. But these features make almost any map too easy. I messed around and purposefully got to round 69 on both Nucked and Verrooked, two of the hardest maps to ever exist, but I was able to do it because Mega Gobble Gums make everything incredibly easy. Black Ops 3's game features just do make things easy, which is probably why the maps need to be so complicated to make up for it. I mean, even with the mystery box, almost every gun in Black Ops 3 is good or great, and if it isn't, you can just double pack a punch it and now it is. You can just double pack a punch a Shiva and it renders the ray gun obsolete. I know it does sound like a weird thing to complain about, right? Like having too many good guns, but it really does make some of them redundant and it makes the outcome of the mystery box matter just a lot less. Whereas in Black Ops 1, a lot of guns were just really bad. So that outcome you got from the mystery box, it really mattered and you had to do the best with what you had. So once again, it does come down to how you decide to play. You can use Double Pack a Punch and Double Tap 2.0 and Mega Gobble Gums on the Black Ops 3 version of Ascension if you want to, or you can just opt not to. Whatever is most fun for you, because after all, Ascension offers enough versatility and simplicity to allow you to have fun in whichever way suits you. Alright, now let's talk about the monkeys. First of all, if you're playing on Black Ops 3 Ascension and you don't want to deal with the monkeys, you can just not turn the power on. Instead, you can use Gobble Gums to get your perks, get the mystery box, pack a punch the weapons, double pack a punch the weapons. You can do it all with Gobble Gums and never have to see a single monkey. But you know what? I really like the monkeys on Ascension. Why? Because they're unique and they add excitement and you get rewarded for your efforts. With dog rounds, which I love of course, we all love the classic dog rounds, nothing much really changes, you just stay in that same routine. Whereas monkeys actually disrupt the flow and they cause you to have to switch up your playstyle for a round. I like that, it keeps it exciting and not to mention, the monkeys not only give you a max ammo, but of course they also give you the perk bottle drop. They're an integral part of the map and I wouldn't have it any other way. One thing I don't get is when people complain about Ascension being too easy, but then they also complain about the monkeys stealing their perks and how they just prefer dog rounds. What? Dog rounds would definitely make things easier, and if you're having trouble with the monkeys, understandably so because they can be quite challenging, that's something you should try to improve upon. Try placing a bunch of claymores in front of the perk machines, try turning on the fire trap next to stamina up, try turning on the turret trap to alert you when they're running for quick revive or PhD, try getting jug from the perk bottle drop instead of opening up the actual jug machine area so that the monkeys can't physically access it and can't steal it from you. Do the strategy I suggested earlier where you just protect PhD flopper or quick revive and you get the other five perks from the monkeys by round 20 and then you can just enjoy having six perks for the rest of the game. Just be careful not to pick up a death machine when you're backed into a corner and you'll be fine. If you are letting the monkeys prevent you from playing this map, there is so much that you're missing out on and you're really not getting the most out of your zombies experience. Use the monkeys to your advantage. In conclusion, Ascension is the definitive zombies experience. Whether you're playing solo or co-op, it just has that classic simplicity and introduced so many new iconic features to the series. Not to mention, it's just pure fun. You know that thing that we kind of forgot when we were routinely having to watch YouTube videos and perform a tedious set of easter egg steps just to access certain features of every map? Yeah, Ascension really is just a better Kino de Toten. I mean, the only thing Kino has that Ascension doesn't are dogs and Nova crawlers, but Ascension has monkeys and barrel rollers. Ascension is an incredibly well-rounded zombies experience that really is the last of its kind. It is the peak of classic zombies gameplay, and that is why it is the greatest map of all time.
Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. As you can tell, fuck, it's cold. As you could probably tell, this is a topic that I am very passionate about, and I actually have to give a really big thank you to The Smith Plays and Tim Hansen. Although I've been a huge COD Zombies fan from the very beginning, most of my YouTube content has been centered around a different kind of zombies experience. And it's fair to say I've been a bit burnt out for a while. Tim made a series where he goes through every single track zombies map in chronological order, and he gives his thoughts about those maps in a really entertaining way, which then inspired Patrick from the Smith Players to do a very similar kind of thing with more of a storytelling narrative. And both of these guys have really rekindled my love for Call of Duty Zombies. So if you are watching this, Tim and Patrick, Thank you. Thank you for inspiring me to make new content and for reigniting this passion inside of me, and also for just reminding me how awesome the Zombies community is. This is sincerely the most fun I've had making a video in a very long time. And if you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and check them out, because I think you'll be really interested in what they have to say. Lastly, a very big thank you to Flicky Tuts or Flicky Toots, Flicky Tutorials, for granting me permission to remix one of his older videos about Ascension. Please, I encourage you to check out the original video. It's like a two minute trailer that is so superbly edited and the original audio is just fantastic. That's it, Ascension's the goat. Even if you disagree with that, by the way, which is completely fine, I hope at least you have gained some appreciation for Ascension being one of the most fundamentally important Call of Duty Zombies maps to ever exist.